What's up lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I am the Malta activist and today we're doing yet another head to head and this time we go all the way to India because I have with me two Indian whiskies from the same distillery that we are going to pit against each other. That's right, as you've seen from the title, these are two Paul Johns all the way from Goa, India. One is the Oloroso finish sherry cask and the other is the Pedro Jimenez finished sherry cask. Oh, let's do this! What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. For those of you who've come here for the very first time, let me introduce myself. I am the Malt Activist and we do everything whiskey related here. From reviews, to travel vlogs, to cocktails, to recipes, to, uh, I don't know, everything to do with whiskeys, especially rants, lots of rants. So if, you know, looking at a middle-aged guy telling you what to do as far as whiskey is concerned, if that's your thing, then this is the right channel for you. So hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon, and make everyone happy because the algorithm demands it. This is, this is not my, it's not my fault that the algorithm is hungry, hungry for content. It's, it's YouTube's fault. Anyway, so let's satisfy that beast. Please hit that subscribe button and that bell icon and I promise you, you will not be disappointed. To all my regular viewers, welcome back. Normal transmission has resumed and I'm extremely happy, so obliged and so, humbled to have you guys back on the channel. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. We are here because we have two whiskeys with us that we have to talk about. Check it out, check it out. Look at the color on these. And I know these are natural color whiskeys. Oh, so good. And okay, what do we know? We know that these uh, two whiskeys are made in India. Um, by the Paul John Distillery, which is located in Goa, which is kind of like south of India, very, very coastal. Um, what else do we know about it? It's a relatively new into the foray of single malt whiskey making. Uh, they've been, uh, I, I believe, um, alcohol manufacturers for a long time. You know, they, uh, they, uh, uh, I think they do rum, if I'm not mistaken. But I also know they do. Uh, they make uh, this one spirit uh, called um, IMFL, which is Indian made foreign liquor, which is a. Uh, which is basically uh, alcohol or whiskey, if you like, that's made from molasses and is very, very popular in India. Uh, so uh, I know Paul John has been um, one of the key players as far as that category is concerned. However, they're a rather uh, late entrance to the world of single malt whiskeys, and I believe uh, they've been at it for about a decade now. And uh, let me tell you something, they're producing some fine, fine spirit, absolutely fine. And these two whiskeys are part of their select cask series. So these whiskeys have been um, matured in, uh, I think, bourbon barrels because they both say they're finishes. So I believe both matured in bourbon barrels and then finished off in their respective sherry costs. One, which is the Oloroso and the other, which is the PX. Can you see that? Yes. By the way, I'm using a new camera today. So the, so the focusing in on this is, I'm not very used to it, but I want to give a big shout out to my friend, uh, Wildlife with Nitin. He's, uh, he's loaned me this camera and this absolutely stunning lens that I'm using. So if you want to check out his work, he's a, the most amazing wildlife photographer I've ever seen in my life. So if you want to check out his work, go on, head on down to Instagram, Wildlife with Nitin, and uh, check it out. I'm going to put a link to uh, his channel uh, right now. So hopefully you can go check him out. And so this is a shout out to him for lending me this amazing lens and this camera that I'm now using. So shout out to you, brother. Okay, uh, Paul John Whiskies. They've, they've made a very, very 
strong name for themselves very, very quickly. And uh, it's, I, I think honestly, it's just down to making sure that their, their, uh, uh, the, their, their processes, the casks that they use, their, their, their standards are very, very high. And in the end, and I, uh, what comes out of the distillery is I think an excellent, excellent spirit. Um, however, I cannot talk about Paul John without first giving a big up to Amrut distilleries, which were essentially the first real uh, Indian distillery that uh, came out with a single malt, a specific good Indian single malt, and kind of like took the world by storm. Uh, everybody was like, oh my God, what the hell is going on? These, these whiskeys are absolutely amazing. And I think it's because they sort of led the, the way uh, uh, for Indian single malt whiskies that other uh, Indian distilleries are able to do that. Paul John being one of them, Rampur is the other, and I believe Kamat is another one as well. So yes, they're all doing fantastic work. If you've not tried Indian whiskies, I highly suggest checking out Paul John, uh, Amrut whiskies, Rampur. Uh, they're all very, very good. Uh, some better than others, obviously, but do uh, find them out and uh, and uh, see wh what it's all about, you know, and I think they're doing some fantastic stuff Which brings me to these two whiskeys. Okay uh, Both bottled at 48% good. Uh, I like that ABV. It's, uh, it's kind of almost in my sweet spot by this perfect sweet spot um, they're both finished in uh, sherry cost. Like I said, one in Oloroso sherry and the other in uh, PX sherry. And what we are going to do is we are going to pour ourselves a dram and we're going to see which one we like better. How does that sound? All right, let's do this. Now, I know it's best to sit and chill and have the drink first before making the video, but I was kind of impatient. I really wanted to get this. I really wanted to get this going. Uh, what I'm pouring now, I hope. Yeah, there you go. Oh, look at that color. So this is the Oloroso. Oloroso. And I'll put that on the left here. And what do we know about this? This is batch number six. Uh, it says manufacturing date 24th March. 2021 which you can see right here I hope that's clear uh, which means it was bottled in 24th March it can't be a year old yeah so it's bottled 24th March in uh, in the year 2021 AD I believe I believe we're in AD right now and I am now opening right in front of you oh, all right, and that's the PX cask. There you go. Look at that. Look at that color. Beautiful. Okay. So there you go. This is Oloroso on my left and PX on my right. What can I tell? Can I tell the difference between color? I cannot tell the difference between color at all. At all. What do we know about this? Huh. They're both bottled on the same day. Holy, holy crap. Except the PX is batch seven. This is batch six. And they're both bottled 24th March. Ooh, can you see? They're both bottled 24th March, 2021. Mm. All right, so let us, let's try the Oloroso first, okay? So this is what we know, it's bottled at 48%. We don't know the age, it's a non-age statement. I'm thinking it's at least maybe about four, four and a half, five years old. I don't even think it's five years old. I think it's around four, four and a half. Um, if you really wanna know the age, I'll try and find out from the uh, master distiller, uh, Michael, his name is. Uh, but uh, I think for now, we can safely assume it's, it's around the, between the four and the five year mark. Uh, very, very, very deep dark color as you can see. Quite bronzy, copper bronze. Uh, very dark. 
Let's see what we get on the nose. Whoa, this is such a massive nose. Super, super strong, extremely intense. It's almost bourbon-like to me. And that's a good thing, and I mean that in a very good way. Like, if you gave this to me blind, there'll be a little part of me that going, ah, oh, is this a bourbon? Is this something from the Elijah Craig distillery? Is this something from Buffalo Trace? Ooh, I love this nose. Very, very intense nose. We have uh, dark figs, sultanas, rum, rum toffee. Lots of toffee, butterscotch, chocolate cake, deep fudge, burnt sugar. Wow. This is a nose for the ages, I have to tell you. It is absolutely stunningly spectacular. Not, not a note off. I'm extremely susceptible to uh, sulfur. So which means this is a fine, fine cask. Ooh, love it. Love it. Great nose. If the nose is good, how bad can the palate be? It's non-chill filtered. Uh, probably means it's got a nice mouth feel. I hope it has a nice mouth feel. Really. Uh, it's 48%. Uh, it's uh, I don't think it needs any chill filtration, obviously. So please, please, Paul John. I hope I hope you've done uh, you've not done any chill filtering on this. Does it say anywhere? Select. Yes, it says it's not chill filtered. Oh, come on, get in the thing. Why are we not able to focus? There you go. I don't like this lens. This lens doesn't focus. Anyway, non-chill filtered. I should just read the labels instead of instead of praying to a higher power. I should just read the labels. Anyway, fantastic, great nose, uh, and uh, it's non-chill filtered. Woohoo! So I guess there's nothing left for me to do but dance. Chin chin. God damn it. Whoa. Yes. Ooh. This is, ah, uh, man. This is, this is everything that I want in a whiskey. This is super amazing mouthfeel. It's, it's almost syrupy. That treacle jam and the dark figs and the, and the dark chocolate, scrumptious dark chocolate, the, 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 the fudge and, and the gooey fudge, like, like a molten chocolate cake when you open it and all the, all the chocolate comes out, it just comes flooding out. Oh, and that tobacco leaf and the cigar box and the oak. Oh, this is quintessentially oh, rosso. Ah. Oh. Love it. This is so good. Man, I don't know what to say. All I can say is this is, this is awesomely constructed, man. This is just absolutely wonderfully constructed. The, the for me, the biggest thing about a whiskey is the mouthfeel. You know, it when it, it coats, when it coats my palate and it just swirls around everywhere without losing its intensity. This was almost like drinking, it was almost like drinking uh, oil. Just the viscosity of it was very oily, but thick oil, um, so syrupy, so jammy, um, so uh, fruity as well. You know, it's sort of this, this dark raisins and figs coming through nicely. Oh man, this could be my new favorite drab. And I've not even had the second one yet. Are you kidding me? That. That cigar box finish, that tobacco, brown tobacco finish, that potpourri in there right at the end. Man, this is something special. Well done, Paul John, with this whiskey. Are you kidding me? This is, this is one of the finest drams I've had in a very long time. And I'm gonna tell you this, man. When I picked these up, I was not sure. I was like, okay, I'm a fan of Paul John, yes. There's some hits and there's some misses, I get it. But this, this, but I've always had a soft spot for the select cask and their select casks are supreme 
and I think they've hit it out of the park with this um, with this Oloroso and PX finish business that they're working on. Well, at least Oloroso, because the Oloroso is fantastic. Uh, so that means overall good, robust spirit, um, uh, pristine uh, casks, perfect maturation time, and just pff, well done. Well done, Paul John. I am, I am a happy camper, which. Uh, which viewers of this channel know is not uh, a, a normal occurrence. So well done. I am, I am not upset. And that means something. Alrighty then, on to our PX cask, our sister PX. Brother PX? Sister PX? Cousin PX? Doesn't matter. Um, so basically, uh, two uh, two spirits put together. I'm guessing around the same time uh, in 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 hogsheads, and then taken out around the same time, and then finished off in separate sherry cost. One in PX, one in Oloroso. Kind of like old Bollywood Indian movies where the brothers grew up together, but then something happens, and one goes here, and the other goes there. One one joins the law, and one is against it. One is a criminal, and the other is is the law, and then they fight. But they in the end, they 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 hug it out, and they meet, and they find their mother as well, who is probably blind. And then they find her and then they're all there like, hey, we're back. And so I think that's what happened to these whiskeys. You know, they grew up together, but then but then they went their separate ways. And now I've brought them together. So yeah, just forget it. Okay, PX. Yes, PX. Also bottled at 48%. That's what the color looks like. Yes, very nice. Great nose. Slightly more savory. Actually, no. Not as intense as the Oloroso. This doesn't smell uh, as um, this doesn't smell like a bourbon to me as Oloroso did. Yeah, it's still smelling that. Um, whew, now we get rose in the Oloroso, but with the PX, a little more savory, more dates, black currant. Leather, tobacco again, so similar profiles there. This one's a little more meaty, I get a meat funk. Maybe a hint of umami in here also. So interesting, interesting nose. I don't like it as much as I like the Oloroso, but still on its own, I don't think it's a bad nose. Maybe a hint of nuts in here. So, you know, just like, just how the Oloroso just came out and uh, grabbed you by the throat. This, the PX doesn't do that. The PX is a little more understated, a little more heavy, heavy handed, uh, and it's sort of staying back in the glass. So I think we're, we're gonna have to do something to coax it out. But the definite distinction is that meat funk, that meaty funk, umami, maybe a mushroomy umami flavor, to uh, the uh, aroma to this, a nose to this, that um, yeah, I quite like, but I still like the Oloroso nose better. So. It is what it is, but hey, maybe the palette blows me away. Again, non-chill filtered. Thank you, Paul John, well done. Okay, I guess there's nothing left for me to do, but dance, chin chin. Mm. Ah. Woo! Wow. Thinner mouthfeel than the uh, Oloroso. A little more spent, uh, spent matches, leather, uh, oak, more milk chocolate than dark chocolate. Uh, more red fruits than dark fruits. Uh, not as oily. And not as robust. Hmm, okay. It's definitely good whiskey on its own. However, compared to the Oloroso, I think the Oloroso definitely a better whiskey in my opinion. Um, by a couple of points at least if um, you know if I give the Oloroso an 8 8.5 I think I'm gonna give the Oloroso select cask an 8.5 a 8.5 a that's what it deserves uh, and I think it's a fantastic dram uh, the PX I'm going to give it a 7 B right I'm gonna give it a 7 B which 
On its own, it's still an above average dram. However, I don't think it is as good as the Oloroso. I would have preferred a more syrupy mouthfeel. I would have preferred it to coat my palate a bit more. Uh, the Oloroso has a bigger finish, the PX not so much. The meat funk, which I which I thought I was gonna get on the palate, I don't, it, I only got it on the nose. Um, definite, uh, definite spices in here for me, uh, some cinnamon, some nutmeg. Actually, there was a lot of cinnamon and nutmeg in the Oloroso uh, finish as well. Um, but uh, you know, but 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 the uh, but the woody woodiness of the Oloroso sort of overpowered the spices for me. Uh, but here in the in the PX, the spices come out a bit more um, because I think uh, the um, uh, it, it's more sort of spice heavy than the than the Oloroso. And again, uh, thinner on the mouth feel. Uh, I wish it was it was more robust. Uh, but still, having said that, still a mighty fine dram in my opinion. Yeah, still a mighty fine dram. Nothing, nothing really wrong with it at all. You know, in fact, it's a good above average dram in my opinion. But when you're gonna drink two, two of them together, mm, you're going to find differences. You're bound to find differences, and that's the difference I find. Oh yeah, that was the Oloroso. Still kicking ass. Still doing a great job. So yeah, there you go, man. Wow. So there you go. You know, honestly, it doesn't matter what I say. Um, if you find either one of these select cost sherry finishes, one in PX or Oloroso, pick either one of them up, whichever one you want. Um, if you're going to twist my arm and hold me to um, hold me to a decision, then I'd say pick the Oloroso over the PX if you're only buying the one. But do what I did, get them both, uh, put them head to head, invite some friends over. Uh, and have them taste them blind and see which one they like better and this could be a nice little tasting for your whiskey club where you're differentiating uh, Essentially same spirits, but finished off in different sherry casks one in PX one in Oloroso. I think that would make for a great uh, Great evening for your whiskey club if that's something you're into I know I'm going to try this with my whiskey club as well uh, Hand it to them blind same spirit But sort of mature, one finished off in PX one finished off in in Oloroso and have them decide which one they like better and if I know my whiskey club, I think they will like the Oloroso better, just like I did. But having said that, still two quality drams from Paul John, which is slowly becoming one of my favorite distilleries. And if you haven't heard of Paul John, or if you haven't tried any Paul John, I highly recommend getting your hands on some of their expressions. And uh, frankly, if you can get your hands on any one of these two, I think you'll be a winner. Uh, my, my money's on the Oloroso. So if you can get the Oloroso finish, definitely get that for yourself. So I just want to say I'm a huge fan of uh, Paul John. Uh, I'm extremely f uh, happy that uh, they're bringing out uh, whiskeys like this, uh, which really test your palate and test, uh, uh, and, and you know, a seasoned whiskey drinker's palate, which is saying a lot. So, uh, and I think they've done a fantastic job with these two whiskeys. So pick, pick either one. Uh, my pick is the Oloroso, uh, but even if you get the PX, hey. I think you're a winner. So, thank you. Thank you for joining me for this whiskey review. I'm the Malt Activist. Until next time, peace.